what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so in today's video i'm pretty much getting the challenger uh ready to be driven again so i haven't really driven the car in what feels like three months it's probably been more like one month but i had to get some uh tires rotated so i loaded up the tires this morning took them to austin infinity my friend brie hooked me up and she's helping me uh, swap all the tires the way i need them long story short i got my hands on a second set of demon wheels and they're not as nice as the ones that i have right now so i'm swapping over my street tires onto the nice wheels and putting my bf goodriches on the other wheels that way i can drive the car to events swap tires drive and not have to worry about a thing and that way the tires last a lot, a lot longer too and the other thing i gotta go do is get like a tap and die set i got a bolt that's stripped out of the driver's side uh knuckle and it's like pretty much the speed sensor and a brake line and it's just kind of flopping everywhere so i need to fix that put a new bolt in there put the tires on and then i can put the status seats in and go do a little shakedown test drive so that's what we're doing today and all this is really gearing up for a autocross event at the end of the year. It's the last one. It's going to be in San Antonio with Vet Motorsports. So I want to get the car squared away, get my seat position squared away. That way I can just arrive and drive and uh, have a great time with some friends, some autocrossing. Uh, it's going to be good to get back in the seat. Last one of the year. Then we're going to shut it down for a little bit. Uh, start working on the truck a little bit more and uh, hopefully get this thing slammed early next year. And I'll give you guys a walk through step by step on that as always and uh, just need a couple more things to arrive and then we'll be ready for that so let me get onto the store let me go pick up my tires get back to the house and we'll continue working All right guys, so as you saw, I got back. I put the rear wheels and tires on with the Nitto Street tires. And now I gotta fix a bolt that goes into this uh, upper knuckle here because it's stripped. Either the bolt is a little stripped or the hole that the bolt goes into needs to be tapped out. So I gotta tap and die set. So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about right here. So it's what holds the speed sensor and the brake line. Uh, the bolt just won't thread into this little home right here so we're gonna go ahead and clean up the threads on the bolt if that doesn't work we'll go ahead and tap out the very beginning of this knuckle that way this bolt can go in because we can't be having this flopping around like that so that's what i'm about to do now let's go check it out all right so this is the kit i got from northern tool up in uh, north austin uh the brand is called clutch it's, it's kind of like a harbor freight but just a little bit better and here's the case right here you can see it's got all the tools you need to get that stuff done so that's what i'm about to do is check the thread pitch on this bolt and uh, go from there we'll just try to clamp the bolt first and hopefully that works all right just to show you guys what i did was i took the metric uh, thread pitch gauge and i got the bolt and then you just keep finding you just keep changing these out until you find the one that fits the threads perfectly hold on it'll fit the threads might be too small to show you guys but it falls right into place and it doesn't move so that's what you're looking for so it's a 1.0 metric and then you grab the die and this is an M7 bolt and it threads right in. It doesn't come out. So I know that the bolt is fine. And I mean, I can tell just by looking at it that it doesn't need to be fixed. So it's definitely uh, the housing it goes into. So we're gonna have to tap that out. Like I said, probably just the first few threads is all it's gonna need. So that's what I'm gonna do now. All right, so I ended up breaking the bolt inside that housing so now i need to go get an extractor set to extract that bolt to use my tap and die set to put a new bolt in it so not a big deal i'm just back at square one where it's zip tied so anyways that was a fail uh we'll fix it later we're just gonna finish putting the wheels and tires on and then i'm gonna go ahead and start setting the passenger seat in the car and then i need to adjust the driver's seat in the car so uh let's get back to it so this is the passenger side Got the wiring harness over here. Got the squid that tells you how close or far away you are from the airbag. Got some air fresheners and some wrenches. Okay, so I'm gonna actually vacuum out the inside of the car because it's filthy. And I was pulling the carpet back and there's a bunch of dirt down here as well. So I'm gonna vacuum all that in there. 
I'll put this plastic piece back on the sill right here. And then we'll go ahead and start putting the seat onto the uh, side mounts and then onto the bracket that bolts into the car itself. And I've got myself an extra person. Can't see him, but so he can sit and tell me what's kind of comfortable or not for the passenger. And then I got to adjust the driver's seat big time. It's sitting a little too high. If I put my helmet on, I'll start touching the roof of the car and I feel like I'm sitting super high. So I need to adjust that seat. So let's get started. All right, so I've already done a lot of the work because I had the previous setup in here. So I've already got this harness here. I measured out the driver's seat harnesses. I got those back down in the back seat. Uh, but now we're gonna set up the seat for the uh, passenger side. So that's right here. Got the planted seat bracket here. I've already got the buckle bolted up for the wiring harness and the eye bolt for the other side of the harness to go into. Uh, so now we need to open up the uh, side, side mounts and uh, put those on and then we'll bolt that to the bracket itself. So I'm gonna get started on that. these bracket mounted to these brackets and now the seat will just bolt right into place um, I made this one a little lower because the driver's side was a little higher so I put it about midway because uh, I don't want it to be so low like Ashley can't see over the dash and I don't want it to be, to be too high so if other people ride with me they hit their head on the uh, roof of the car like I do so this seat's ready to go in I just need to put the side harness which is this one buckle it onto the bracket Right there, the eye bolt. And I'll tuck this underneath and that'll be the seat belt when we're not using the harnesses. So everything's working out great. Now let's get it inside the car. All right guys, so in the middle of filming yesterday's video, putting the seats in, the GoPro died. Uh, and it was already getting kind of late anyways. So we just kind of head and uh, finished up installing the seats. Now, if you want to see a more in-depth how-to video, I'll put a link in the description down below when I originally put aftermarket seats in my Challenger, and that should help you out. Since I had already done a majority of the work for those seats, putting these seats in here was 10 times easier. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go for a little drive. I've driven a little bit, but nothing too crazy. Uh, the seats are super comfortable. I mean, like, you're in, you're tight. And for being a fixed back seat, if you sit back, um, it's really it's really not that bad. I don't know how it's gonna be on long distance drives, but the cushion on the bottom is extremely comfortable, super padded, so there's no discomfort there. And it's not so tight around my uh, hips and my waist or my back that I feel uncomfortable. So I could see these being put like in a show car or like your street car, uh, you know, and you can really diversify your build with a set of these seats without it taking away from comfort. So I think it definitely adds some comfort, especially during like spirited driving. I know some people do like canyon runs or like here in Texas, we got the hill country. And I know people like to drive a little more spirited in those areas of uh, town. So I think seats like this would definitely be, you know, it would be really cool to have in your car even if you're not going to be racing or autocrossing like i do so yeah i'm like i'm blown away they look so good in the car too so maybe i'll do a walk around here real quick so you guys can check them out you know not always from this point of view so yeah super stoked uh, now i'm gonna go for a little drive and uh, see how they feel um just kind of cruising down the highway and stuff like that so let me get ready all right so something quick and very important for me to note and point out a lot of people don't know this, but I do not drive, like if I'm driving to, I don't know, go get a water burger or an In-N-Out burger, I don't drive with the harnesses on. I kept the seatbelt buckle attached to the bracket and it's still plugged in one, so I don't get a check engine light and two. This is very much still a street car, so when I go on cruises or me and Ashley want to take the car out, we can still utilize our seatbelts. But more importantly, the harnesses, if you, you know, worst case scenario, get into an accident, your body stays put, but your head keeps moving. And that's where you get neck injuries. That's why when you do go race and you wear harnesses, you have to wear a Hans device, you know, it's for protection. So I know it looks cool when you're rolling down the street and you got, you know, status racing or whatever company you prefer, you got those harnesses on there, but it's just really not safe because you never know what could happen. So if I could say anything is don't drive with just harnesses, 
always try to find a way to keep your seatbelt intact. And then, uh, you know, when you're at car shows or whatever, you want to show off the harnesses, you know, go for it. But don't drive around with just harnesses. So, PSA. So, I actually got a, you know, I hope the uh, wind noise isn't too bad for the drone. Oil change required. Mr. Let me know. Mr. Let me know. Those uh, those 
late classes at the end of the day. Gives you more time to do your homework. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. I did the initial install on the seats. I tried to fix something on the car and I made it worse. Stuff happens, we're gonna fix it. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, initial reaction on the seats is, I mean, they're, they're great. I could live in these seats, I swear to God. Like, these things are so awesome. I'm debating on getting a set of these exact same circuit seats for the Daytona or if I should get the reclinable seats for the Daytona. So I'm still kind of debating that itself, but I really love these seats. So I think they will look bald in the Daytona as well once we get it all sorted out. So that wraps up today's video, guys. I'm gonna keep this part nice and sweet, keep it nice and short. Uh, you guys know what to do. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you like the circuit seats? Do you like the design we came up with? You know, leave a comment below. And if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you love these videos, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, guys, peace out, because I gotta get to class.